one. So we're back to talk about random forest in R. Uh, so the package for this is going to be the random forest package. And again, you may have to install it. If you need to, you can go over to the package installer, right? And type in random forest and hopefully it'll come up. Um, you can also just in type install dot packages random forest, right? And that will also do it, right? And this will actually update the loader package. I don't want to do this right now, so I'm just going to cancel that out, but that will give you another way to do it. So in this case, we're going to take, we're going to create a random forest. And essentially it's just like everything we've been doing. We're just going to regress the input function on the um, features that we'd like to train on. We're going to give it the training data. Um, and uh, we're, we wanted to calculate the importance so um, of the features, so in, as we talked about in the lecture, that's a really cool way to kind of see what it's doing. So we're going to set importance to true. Uh, and then one other thing we're going to do, um, it, it sometimes um, throws up a little or barfs a little if you have on uh, NAs or not available data. So we're just going to tell it to emit those examples. And then we have to tell it how many trees to create. And in this case, I'm only going to create 150 trees. The main reason why I'm doing that is just so I can show it to you quickly. It does take a little bit of time to run, right? And so I don't want to be sitting here all day waiting for it to finish. You can make it 1,500. It won't take that much longer, right? Um, or even 15,000, right? Um, and then what does the plot of the random fit the tree? It basically shows you, remember that error rate we talked about, about how well each tree does on classifying its out of sample errors? It kind of gives you a breakdown of that. So that's what this chart is. It's not terribly useful um the more useful thing is probably to look at the the confusion matrix which is generated for us nicely right when we print that variable out and it tells us what the class error is so it, it gets a lot more yeses wrong than it does uh right and that's on the training date obviously and then an even better tool to look at is what's called the variable importance plot which doesn't show up at all in this little graph let me see yeah oh there it goes that's a little better, right? So there we get it. And so there you can see what the mean decrease in accuracy is for each of those variables. And so duration of the previous call is important. The month is important and the age is important to uh, making this prediction, right? Um, we can then generate our standard confusion matrix on the training data. Of course, check it on the testing data as well. And on the testing data, Right, um, it's probably got the best so far. It's definitely a little bit better than the decision trees, but not by much. If you look at the off angle matrix, it's getting about 3,200 wrong as opposed to 3,300. So that's a slightly better improvement over what the decision trees were doing. But again, you know, it's a cool little tool. It's very easy to use. Um, uh, the variable importance plot is really cool because it kind of shows you how important each of those variables is. Uh, so uh, that's the random force. In the next section, we're going to talk about genetic algorithms.